I'm pretty sure in many ways I'm an unlikely candidate for God to use. Well, at least I've felt that way. Have you? Wondered if God could really use you? I will say, though, there's not much coincidence in my life, and so I always want to give the credit where credit is due. I've realized that it's really not about God using the super talented, but about Him using the super available and willing. God is actively working with purpose. I've realized if we watch expectantly for God, we will see His hand more and more in all the little details of life. And if our hearts are turned towards Him and He knows we are willing, He will use even the unlikely candidates to build His kingdom. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now all glory to God who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might think or ask. Like I said, if we watch, we will see God in all these little intertwining details. And one thing that caught my attention was a conversation one day I had with my catering friend. I was planning our upcoming ball with her when she randomly, but not really randomly because God was at work in this detail, mentioned that she catered to a girls' juvenile detention center. It quote-unquote randomly came up twice, at least twice, and I had a God-given thought, maybe I could get them my book to read. It was designed to encourage teen girls, and it was laid out where they could even discuss the different lessons God was teaching me. I asked my friend, and she connected me with the leader there. The leader agreed that I could give the girls a book, journal, and necklace for Christmas, and we were able to do that because of our ministry supporters. Well, I was going to meet the girls briefly in person and let them know we were excited to leave them the gifts. I walked through this tall barbed wire fence as the security guard opened the lock gate for me. I had never been in an atmosphere like a prison before. It was definitely out of my initial comfort zone. Before I met the girls, I met the leader, and I asked what I was allowed to talk about or not. I obviously loved Jesus and would love to talk about him, but this was a state-run facility, and I had to respect their guidelines and protocols. But when it came to what I could talk about, it ended up she gave me completely free reign. I could talk about God, so I did. And actually, the girls had a lot of questions. They asked more than even I talked. At the end of meeting, 25 of these girls of whom had committed different crimes, I had the God-given thought in my mind and heart about going through the book with them. Let me just stop and say, in looking at the situation, it seemed like I was such an unlikely girl who couldn't relate to what all these girls had done and gone through. Yet, I knew of the hope that they needed. And I said, God, if you want me to do this, let them be completely open to me coming and I'll do it. So I asked the leader if they would be willing for me to come in once a week for eight weeks to go through the book. She said yes without hesitation. Okay, well then, I guess I was going to do this. So once a week, I walked through the tall barbed wire gate. The guard locked up my keys and cell phone, and I waited for the girls to walk in. We would read through my book about my journey in high school and college and all the lessons God taught me about relationships, hurt, humbleness, judging others, and so on, leading to find a place where Jesus was truly the love of my life, and he blessed me with a relationship that reflected his love. Let me just say those nights in front of the girls weren't easy. It was honestly a tad scary, and I felt a bit inadequate. Yet, God gave me such a love for these girls, even though they were somewhat loud and rambunctious. I just trusted God would use it, since I was sure he said to do it. At times, I would even invite friends to go with me. At first, One friend would go, but usually it ended up just being me. Well, one evening, another friend finally got to attend one of the meetings with me. After she saw the unruliness the girls sometimes displayed and her knowing my story and theirs were so different, she said, I'm praying for someone to come to speak to them that can really relate with them. Of course, that was a great thing to pray for, but it hurt a little bit as it also seemed she was saying I was the wrong person for the job. Honestly, in the world's point of view, I probably was, but I knew even if it felt like the case, God had a plan to use me still, though I was a lesser unlikely candidate, and I completely trust he did. We don't always know the effects of our obedience and the impact that was made because God used us, but I did see several girls that stood out that God seemed to be working in. 
But there was this one in particular who was really vocal about what God was doing. And as we went through the book and each chapter had highlighted scripture, she said she started loving reading the Bible for the first time. She would run up to me and tell me what she had read recently and how God was teaching her. She had taken one of the journals we had given and been writing out her prayers and poems and songs to God. She even said she wanted to wait to have sex until she was married and have a godly relationship. But this was just part of what God was up to. Soon into me doing the study, I was contacted by another ministry group and some new friends of mine who had heard what I was doing, and they too wanted to pour into these girls. I connected them to the leader who said they could also come in and speak. Well, not only did I get to join with this ministry, Eternal Heiress, in getting to baptize girls who accepted Jesus during their sessions, but they also started an ongoing ministry to the girls and now guys at the Juvenile Detention Center. God led them to create a study to help them break free from their past and accept Jesus and the forgiveness and full life He offers. Wow, how God has used them. I feel like I had a small part to play, though really it was so important, and I don't know how all God used my eight weeks, but I do know God loves to use the body of Christ together. Each of us have an important part to play so that the body as a whole builds itself and the kingdom of God. Ultimately, our job is obedience to God, and His part is making the way and bringing about the outcome. So yes, no matter how unlikely you feel to be used, you are a vital part of the body. So even when people say you can't do something, maybe that voice is you, or maybe someone else seems like they would be better suited, if God calls you to do something, do it, even if you have no one believing you can. God loves to work through the humble, the willing, and the unlikely. If you believe in Jesus, you are a part of the body, and your part, though you don't always know how it's all connected, is so very important. So be watching for God to guide you in the little and the big things in your everyday, and be willing to say yes when He says, this is your part to play. Ephesians 4.16 says he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love.